Hello and welcome to this short tutorial. My name is Marinos Karlambidis and I will talk to you about the basic principles of policy-based management. This is the outline of the tutorial. I first have a couple of introductory slides on policy-based management and the advantages of this technology. I will then present the main architecture proposed in the literature along with approaches for policy specification and I will finish with some examples. It is evident that modern networks have become increasingly difficult to manage, mainly due to the diversity in networking technologies, the vast number of resources and the high demand for bandwidth intensive as well as delay sensitive applications. These complexities pose significant challenges to existing network management models, which can lead to cumbersome administration processes, especially when network reconfiguration is needed to adapt to new services, unpredicted demand, changing business objectives and application requirements. Policy-based management is a management paradigm that has been researched substantially and has been proposed as a potential solution for simplifying the network administration process. Under this paradigm, an administrator can manage different aspects of a network or distributed system in a flexible and simplified manner by deploying a set of policies that govern its behavior. Policies are technology-independent rules aiming to enhance the hard-coded functionality of managed devices by introducing interpreted logic as opposed to compiled logic that can be dynamically changed without modifying the underlying implementation. This means that it is possible to add, remove and edit policies without the need to recompile the management logic. The policy-based management paradigm offers three main advantages. The first is flexibility, since a certain degree of programmability can be achieved without the need to interrupt the operation of either the managed system or of the management system itself. The second is adaptability, because through policies, an administrator can automatically configure the network to react to emerging conditions and achieve the desired objectives. Also, this approach facilitates scalability since a few policies can manage devices in a collective fashion, thus avoiding the need of specifying multiple vendor-specific scripts for different device technologies as traditionally done. The most well-known policy-based management architecture was specified jointly by the IETF and the DMTF. As depicted on the right, this consists of four main functional elements. The policy management tool, the policy repository, the policy decision point and the policy enforcement point. The policy management tool is used by an administrator to define or update the policies to be enforced in the managed network. Resulting policies are stored in a repository in a form that must correspond to an information model, such as the one proposed in RFC 3060, so as to ensure interoperability across products from different vendors. When new policies have been added in the repository or existing ones have been changed, the policy management tool issues the relevant policy decision point with notifications, which in turn interprets the policies and communicates them to the policy enforcement point. The latter is a component that runs on a policy aware node and can execute or enforce the different policies. The preferred choice for communicating policy decisions between a policy decision point and the policy enforcement points is the common open policy service or the simple network management protocol. LDAP can be used for the communication between the PMT slash PDP and the policy repository. Let's now move to policy specification. Network administrators can specify policy rules using various approaches. The simplest approach is through a sequence of rules where each rule is in the form of a simple condition action pair. The IETF policy framework adopts this approach and considers policies as rules that specify actions to be performed in response to defined conditions as indicated in the upper part of the slide. The conditional part of the rule can be a simple or compound expression specified in either conjunctive or disjunctive normal form. The action part of the rule can be a set of actions that must be executed when the conditions are true. The IETF does not define a specific language to express network policies, 
but rather a generic object-oriented information model for representing policy information. Another approach is the one adopted by Ponder, which was developed at the Imperial College. Ponder is a declarative object-oriented language that can be used to specify both security and management policies. In Ponder, policies are viewed as objects which define the relationships between subjects, which are the managers, and targets, which are the managed objects. It supports two main policy types, authorization and obligation policies. Authorization policies define what actions a subject can perform on target objects. A positive authorization policy is used to define the actions that subjects are permitted to perform on target objects, whereas negative authorizations define the actions that subjects are prohibited from performing. The policy listed on the bottom left presents the syntax of a positive authorization. It specifies that subject A is authorized to access target B under some conditions. Obligation policies are event condition action rules that define the operations that must be performed by managers of the subject domain on objects of the target domain when certain events occur, given some supplementary conditions being true. The policy listed on the bottom right specifies the syntax of obligation policies. While authorizations are executed by access controllers, obligation policies are enforced by policy enforcement points, which facilitate the adaptation of the managed system according to emerging conditions. The events triggering obligation policies can be external events notified by a monitoring service. Now, this slide provides some example policies that do not relate to networking for the sake of simplicity and better understanding. Ideally, policies should be specified in the form of high-level objectives that are easy for humans to express. These can subsequently be translated to low-level implementable policies. At the top, there are two such examples that represent high-level objectives of a research group. The first says that research papers should be submitted to high-quality conferences and the second that people with high quality publications should be promoted. According to the IETF format, the first one would be translated to the following condition action rule. If the acceptance ratio of a conference is less than 20%, then papers should be submitted to that conference. The second objective would translate as follows. If person X gets three Infocom papers, then that person should be promoted. The equivalent example in Ponder format for the first objective is depicted on the right part of the slide. In this case, the triggering event is the approaching deadline for Conference X. Upon this event, Professor X, who is the subject, will instruct student Y, who is the target, to submit a paper to Conference X if that conference is Infocom. A representative example of a dynamic resource management policy concerns the utilization tracking and link partitioning among traffic flows or LSPs to meet local performance targets. By tracking the utilization, the objective is to ensure that the allocated bandwidth is in accordance to the required bandwidth. The figure on the left shows that when the monitor utilization exceeds the upper threshold, the allocated bandwidth is increased. Similarly, when the utilization crosses the lower threshold, this value is decreased. The triggering of policy actions is based on upper and lower thresholds of the bandwidth consumed by a flow. A threshold crossing alarm will be raised when the utilization exceeds the upper threshold or drops below the lower threshold. The black line represents the actual load on the link and the blue line shows the allocated bandwidth. An increase in the allocation can be achieved by the ponder policy shown on the right, which is triggered and enforced at runtime. The upper threshold alarm is issued for a specific flow on the link. This triggers the action to increase the allocation for that flow by 25%. The action is executed by the dynamic resource management policy enforcement point, and the target is the managed object responsible for bandwidth allocation. Note that the last line constrains the policy to be executed only during peak hours. 
a less aggressive increase to the allocation could be specified for off-peak hours. This concludes the short tutorial on policy-based management. Thanks for watching and hope you learned something useful.